Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, Banggood.com sent me this uh, Unity UT622A LCR meter um, for review. However, it's a little bit more complex than any other reviews I have ever done. So I figure I have to kind of cover the basics first. So in this first look video, I'll explain a little bit what an LCR meter is and how it is different to this uh, Kaiweetz meter here, which is just a regular multimeter. On top of that, we're going to take this thing for a spin. We'll do a little bit of testing on it and we'll see how it acts in normal situations. So first and foremost, is this thing the same as this thing? And the answer is absolutely not. In fact, as a hobbyist, it is nice to have an LCR meter, but unless you're doing advanced stuff, I would say you don't need one. Um, basically, by the time you need one of these, you understand why you need one. So if you're wondering if you need one, no, you don't. Just go get a regular multimeter and it'll serve you just fine. In fact, I don't even think there's a way to check voltage on this, presence of voltage. There's no way to check current on this. This is a very specific tool, even though physically they resemble each other. In fact, there is even a little bit of overlap in their functions. This one here can check resistances. That's the R in LCR. This one here can check resistances. This one here can check capacitance, so the uh, ability of a capacitor to store charge. This one here can also check capacitance. So basically, in the LCR, the C and the R in this one are already covered by this one. That's not a good thing, right? Well, it's a little bit more complex than that. So although this one here can check capacitance, uh, a lot of multimeters can, not all, but a lot of them can, right here with this uh, capacitor symbol, it's not really the same thing. How this one checks capacitance is it sends a constant current, so it, it a known current through these leads and charges up the capacitor. And then it measures how much time it takes to fill that capacitor or to charge up that capacitor and then that it calculates the uh, capacitance based on that. This one here, however, puts through an AC voltage. It does a lot more uh, testing than this, and the importance with that AC voltage is that the capacitance can change, can and does change, based on frequency. So this one here works DC, this one here works AC, and in fact it's the same thing for resistance. This thing here typically can give you a more accurate resistance result, especially for low resistances because it uses an AC uh, voltage to achieve that measurement. This one here will test resistances in DC. This one here can actually calculate what the DC equivalent resistance is of something like a capacitor. This one cannot. And for that extra letter, the L, that's inductance. Inductance uh, on DC, an inductor is pretty much an open or, or a closed circuit. It's pretty much a, a short circuit, I should say. So an inductor on a DC circuit will do almost nothing. I mean, on paper, it'll do absolutely nothing. In real life, when you power on the circuit, that moment where the voltage goes from zero to whatever it was supposed to be in the circuit, that inductor will do something. But typically, if just constant, if there's a, a current constantly flowing through, an inductor is like a piece of wire. It doesn't do anything. However, when it comes to AC, alternating current, in that case, the inductance will have an effect on the circuit. It'll resist the change in current. So that's when you need an LCR meter. In fact, the LCR meter, to me, the reason I wanted this thing is so I can check equivalent inductors and so I will be able to check really small resistances. Like this thing is quite sensitive to resistance to the fact that you can actually use let's say a piece of wire, and it will tell you the equivalent inductance. So again, if you're a beginner, 
you probably want to pick up something like this. And I'll have a couple links in the description for a couple different meters you can try. But if you're getting more advanced, you probably want something like this. This is a kind of expensive piece of kit, but I'll show you very shortly. This thing is really nice. So just a quick tour around this meter now, and again, the full tour is going to come into the review, but I just want to show you real quick how uh, fancy this thing is. You might be able to see the screen right there. Uh, so we can use this button here, and I'll just want to go from the beginning. So we can switch it between L, which is uh, inductance, C, which is capacitance, R, which is resistance, and Z, which is impedance. Uh, impedance being uh, some sort of ace. I can't really explain it too well. Uh, that's going to be a video for like a basics series. Um, but it's a factor of the ohmic resistance and the reactance of the component. Um, yeah, that's that's actually needs its own video for the theory of that. But those are the th the four main functions. We also have some secondary functions here. Um, which we have D, dissipation factor. Um, we have X, I'm not sure. I think X is the uh, ESR, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the manual's a bit vague on that. We have uh, theta, I believe that's theta, which gives us um, an offset in degrees. We've got theta again, which gives us an offset in radians, different ways to um, describe, a, a, a describe the, the degrees or the measurements on a circle. Um, and the ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. Uh, for dissipation factor and quality factor, the D and the Q, that'll have to be a separate video as well because that's a bit over my head. Uh, I'm just barely at the point of understanding it and to be able to explain it to you, I need to understand it a little bit better. Now, earlier I was talking about the frequency and if you look up here, there's the uh, frequency for the test, which is uh, quite important because certain devices will change their inductance and capacitance uh, based on the frequency. So I guess the thought here is when you're specking a capacitor or an inductor, you have to match the frequency of your tester to the frequency you're going to be using on your board or in your device. And then you can pick the correct um, component for that. Also, this thing does tolerance testing. Uh, meaning that you can actually set uh, like a fail or a pass figure. Um, this thing does auto recognition, which is down here. Um, you can change the speed of the testing for how many times per second. Fast is 20 times, 20 tests per second. Medium is five uh, tests per second and slow is two tests per second. So, I mean, this thing is absolutely beyond what I would need. But that's kind of good because for a hobbyist or a beginner, it's expensive. But for the amount of stuff it can do, the price is right. So I think the next thing left to do is for us to just try a couple components and see what we get as a result. We're going to first start off with inductors because that's the one thing that a regular multimeter cannot do. And also you've probably noticed that I've raised the brightness of the whole scene and that's because this is an OLED display. So although it is quite nice to look at from my point of view, it is not very bright, you know, kind of like me. So um, I've got here, uh, these are a couple of homemade inductors that I've made and here's uh, some ordered ones. This one is supposed to be a 47 micro Henry and these I have no idea. So we're about to find out. So I'm going to connect this here. I'm going to use the crocodile clips. Now there is the, um, the facilities here to do proper up to five wire measurement as per the manual but I think this is just easier for demonstration sake if I could just hook them up like this. Okay, so these are supposed to be 47 microhenries. They are uh, 46.35 with an equivalent series resistance of 360 milliohms, which means at uh, 10 kilohertz, uh, it'll present a resistance to your power supply of roughly 360 milliohms. That is not a lot of resistance. Uh, so basically, if you gave this thing an AC signal, 
uh, it would still let a lot of current through. Uh, let's see if we can change the frequency here. So there it is at 100 hertz, and there we have pretty much exactly 47 microhenries. 120 hertz, 48, kind of good. 1 kilohertz, still 47.7, and then, am I touching here? Nope, not touching. And then at uh, our max test frequency, 46.33. So this is a really good inductor. It works. Uh, let's try my different transformers. Now, I believe they have different amounts of turns on them. I'm not 100% sure. This one is definitely different. These two use the same ferrite core. So let's see. I'm going to go from one end, and I believe it's center tapped. So one end to the center pin. What are we getting? 150 microhenries. I just, the, the, the multimeter is laid flat and from my angle I see my studio lights in the screen so that's why I'm having trouble telling you. Um, but this will present 1.12 ohms. But look at the precision here. This is like precise to three decimal points. And then you've got the, the last one there jittering up and down. We can change the frequency again. So 170 microhenries. Uh, 170, 163, and then 149 at 10 kilohertz. Pretty neat. Let's check my other ones here. I made these for uh, Jewel Thief experiments. So here and here. There you go, 124. 149, 149, 144. 130. Let's try from one end to the other, like so. Okay, so that goes through uh, basically twice here. So uh, 744, we'll change the frequency, and you'll notice that at lower frequencies the ESR is lower because we're approaching DC, right? The, the, the further down we go in frequency, the closer we approach DC, and DC, it'll be the ESR should be you know, at DC, the equivalent series resistance will be whatever this gauge of wire is times the distance. You know what I mean? Up the frequency, 1.54, up again, 1.37, and then up again, 883 micro henries. Pretty neat. We can actually check if this one is exactly the same because I believe there's the same amount of turns. No, it's different, 354. Neat, you can't do this with a regular multimeter. You need an LCR meter. Next up, I have a small collection of capacitors here. Uh, so starting with this uh, ceramic one, uh, this is uh, 682 is the capacitor code, which should equal uh, 6.8 nanofarads. Hook this up. Okay, and then let's check the uh, auto mode. I'm not sure if it'll work, but let's see. There we go. So it actually did work in automatic mode. Um, so we've got a dissipation factor here. We can change that to whatever we want. So there's the ESR, equivalent series resistance. And this is giving us uh, 8.3 nanofarads. So it's supposed to be 6.8. Let's see what happens when the frequency changes. Well, 8.45, 8.42, 8.43, and then back up to 8.1. Did I read this wrong? 6.82, nope. So perhaps these Chinese capacitors aren't quite what I thought they were. That's the interesting part here is that how would you know if this was an accurate capacitance without an ES, uh, without a uh, LCR meter? Next one up is this electrolytic 2.2 micro. Here we go. And at uh, 10 kilohertz, we've got one and a half micro. That's a bit low. Uh, let's change the frequency. This is more, you know, 100 hertz is probably more in the region that I would use it. I typically make DC-ish circuits. So uh, we've got 2.115 uh, 
uh, microfarads. So pretty close to the 2.2. We can raise that up to 120 hertz, kind of the same. One kilohertz dropped a little bit, you know, 2.039, and then all the way up to 10 kilohertz. So you know when um, when people say to use, you know, 10 nano and and smaller type capacitors for decoupling. It's probably for these kinds of reasons that at higher frequencies, these things lose their effectiveness over these things. Kind of makes sense. Last but not least is the R, the resistance. And for that, I figured I would put put it on this uh, Kaiwitz multimeter gauntlet that I've built in a previous video. I'm not quite sure how to align these things, but we'll see what it gives us. So this is supposed to be uh, 10 ohms. What do we got? Look at that. 10.041 at 10 kilohertz. And we drop it to 100 hertz. It doesn't matter. It's still super precise. It's, I mean, it's just a precise resistance meter at this point. Let's go up to 100 ohms. I'm not sure what climbing the entire ladder would give us. But if you want to see the entire test suite, you'll have to wait for the review. Look at that. 100.05 ohms. I mean, what do you want? This is a super precise multimeter. Um, and the precision comes not only from the build quality in this case, Unity has been pretty solid for me so far, but also in the way it does its measurements. AC measurements uh, seem to be more accurate than DC measurements, at least, you know, for resistance, uh, capacitance, and inductance. And I mean, what else can I say about this? This is a multimeter that I don't think I'll ever outgrow. I don't think I will need another LCR meter so long as I live. If another company wants to send me another one to take a look at, then at least I could do a comparative testing, an A-B testing. But other than that, this thing just freaking works. And I think one of its other features that I really love is this. It is USB recharged. I wish it was USB-C, but I can't be that uh, difficult on it. But you don't have to go and get double or triple A batteries or God forbid, nine volt batteries. This thing has an internal battery and it charges super quickly. A multimeter does not use a lot of battery to stay alive and to do its tests. LCR meters, probably a bit more than a traditional meter, but this thing has a lithium battery. Awesome. I will also check for the review if it's removable, but I honestly feel like it is. So if you have any questions about this LCR meter, I want you to put them in the comments below because I am slowly but surely working on my my review of this multimeter, or LCR meter I should call it. It's not really a multimeter. Um, but I think I have to tackle, you know, I have to know what all the buttons do and what all these things actually mean. So I'd probably be doing some sort of uh, basics videos on that first. So if you put the comments down below what you want to see in the review, I will make sure to consider it and add it if necessary. Other than that, if you want this thing, if you know what it does, you're just looking for a good handheld LCR meter, head down to the comments or to the description and you'll see a link there. Thanks for watching.